Before we begin, uh, here's just a little housekeeping. First, it's important to remember that this is not medical advice. I am making this video with the sole purpose of giving you a jumping off point for your own research. Second, be kind to each other in the comments. Everyone's transition looks different, and what works best for you might not be what's best for someone else. Finally, YouTube's algorithm works off a few metrics. Watch time, whether or not you're subscribed, and whether or not you click on to another video from my channel. The best free way for you to support my content creation is to watch the videos all the way to the end, click the like button, and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get to it. Hey everybody, it's Zach Lettercast, and welcome to my channel. If, you're, if it's your first time here, welcome for the first time. If it's your millionth time here, welcome back. Today we're going to be covering the topic of conjoined bilateral pedicled groin flap phalloplasty, also known as the KIM FTM phalloplasty method. We're going to talk about just a basic overview, some pros and cons, costs, what the stages are, who offers it, and then we're going to go in more depth and talk about the surgical procedure itself. As always, remember that I'm not a medical professional. I am just a trans guy who's got a little bit of an obsession, and I want to share what I've learned with you. All of my sources will be cited in the description, and without further ado, let's begin. So the first type of phalloplasty that I want to approach here is called Kim FTM phalloplasty. It is named after the surgeon who developed the method. So this is also called a conjoined bilateral pedicled groin flap phalloplasty. It's a three-stage procedure, and it's less expensive than other microsurgeries. Um, you can, if you choose, uh, receive an implantation of a malleable erectile prosthesis but you cannot receive an inflatable prosthesis. Your results are going to look like four inches long on average by about 1.75 inches in girth. You will be able to avoid while standing as long as you choose to get your erythroplasty, and you may also be able to do penetration, especially if you choose an implant. Now, uh, erogenous sensation is achieved through a buried clitoris at the neophallus base. However, some surgeons may allow you to opt to leave your clitoris unburied, um, and then you will expect tactile sensation in the bottom half. The stages of the surgery are, you know, they'll vary between surgeons, as will pretty much the stages of every surgery that we talk about. But generally, stage one will be your phalloplasty, scrotoplasty, and your tes testicular implants. Stage two will be your penile prosthesis implantation if you choose that. And then stage three will be your vaginectomy and your erythroplasty if you choose those. Now, there has been a recent bigenital surgery increase, if you will, where a lot of people are choosing to not do that stage three with the vaginectomy and urethroplasty. As I mentioned, this is actually one of the least expensive phalloplasty options. Generally, including all of the stages, averages out to be about 23,000 US dollars, which is really acceptable <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. If you're only opting to do stage one and two, that's gonna knock down your price by almost seven grand. So if you're looking for something that is affordable and flexible in terms of your options with vaginectomy and urethroplasty, this might actually be your best bet. The surgeons offering this phalloplasty are, are few and far between. You've got Dr. Kim, who's in Seoul, Korea, and then you've got Dr. Ivan Enriquez, who is in Mexico. The Kim method is a groin flap phalloplasty variation in which a large pedicled flap the size of approximately 15 by 30 centimeters based on the superficial circumflex iliac artery is raised from the left inguinal area. The flap's medial aspect is not dissected and is left in situ. Commonly, the dissection can be stopped when the vessels have been reached. The flap is rolled up and sutured into a tube. The lateral end is split in the middle into a fishtail, which is de-epithelialized. At the lower aspect of the os pubis, or the position of the neophallus base, 
an omega-shaped skin incision is made. Both de-epithelialized tail parts are anchored deep into the omega incision to sturdy tissues on either sides of the midline, and the flap skin is sutured into the pubic skin. Thus, the flap is anchored at both ends with the resulting bucket handle appearance. The bucket handle is left for approximately five weeks to ascertain circulation into the tissue from both ends of the flap. At a later procedure, in local anesthesia, the initial medial pedicle is transected and the neophallus is expected to be circulated from its base. Once completely healed, a number of outpatient surgical procedures are offered, such as the insertion of erectile rods and in, and in some cases testicular prostheses, coronaplasty, and tattooing of the glands. Thank you guys so much for watching my video, and I hope it was educational. If you like what you saw today, hit that button down below, subscribe, and like and share the video with anybody you think it might be useful to, um, and leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to cover next. Uh, this is definitely something I'm really interested in and have a lot of fun doing, so yeah, give me the requests. I want them.